tallied in multiple counties. The Secretary of State's office says the ballots were human error, even calling for one county election director to resign. The president and his team have insisted that Georgia's signature verification process is too weak. But Georgia's Republican Secretary of State's office insists that Republicans entered into an agreement here in Georgia that strengthened voting signature verifications and that the state's audit actually helped the president's numbers. The main thing is we're going to continue to follow the law and continue to follow our processes. And the irony of this is that fraudulent votes have been found, he has gained in the finding of those votes. So the system's working the way it's intended. Georgia is set to verify its vote tomorrow. And once that is complete, uh, the president's campaign has 48 hours to request a recount, which it is allowed to do, Trace. That fed live for us in Atlanta. Matt, thank you. Well, the president's ally is now making the case that the voting irregularities in Georgia are just a small part of a larger problem with the 2020 election. Here's Congressman Matt Gates. If we can flip Georgia by showing that there was not accurate counting there, then I think it pulls back the whole veneer that the yeah. media and others and Matt, have tried to put on these on these mail-in ballots. Have you been Joining us now, Robbie Soav, ed associate editor at Reason, and Jessica Tarla, Fox News contributor. So, Robbie, what do you think? Uh, Trump's allies are certainly making this claim. They are making this case that there are much bigger issues. Sure, and they have the right to do that. Um, However, I think their, their, their broader claim, certainly we are finding disturbing uh, irregularities, errors, usually human error, uh, innocent mistakes, but uh, or not intentional mistakes, not, maybe not innocent, but mistakes of a couple hundred or maybe a, a, a few thousand votes, not enough that we've seen thus far. Maybe, maybe they have something, something big to reveal, but so far it, it doesn't seem to me like there's a path to change. I mean, you would need to have the, the, thou the thousand error vote uh, if discovered for, for, for President Trump, you'd have to have that happen <laughs> like a, a ton of times to just flip Georgia, and then even that doesn't seal the election. So while I, I understand that the campaign should pursue every uh, means available to them to make sure you know we know exactly how many votes, which both parties got, that's important to but do regardless the of the challenge outcome, it's being, we need to know. At least it's I being still don't know out. that it's going to matter in the end. I want to get Jessica in here. At, at least the challenge, though, Jessica is pointing out and poking holes in the system um, based on these challenges and based on these discoveries, perhaps it can improve the system. Oh, I'd love to improve the system. I think that both sides should be working towards that, and I hope that this will bring Democrats and Republicans together um, to work towards safer and fairer elections as, as we move forward. That was a goal of Democrats going into this election in terms of foreign interference. So I hope that's absolutely the outcome. But Robbie's 100% right here. This is not Florida in 2000, where 537 votes are going to decide who gets elected or not. And when you see Republicans chasing around saying, oh, the Republicans should have won Georgia, you know you're in trouble. If the blue wall remains intact, which it will, and we haven't seen irregularities like we did with this human error in Georgia there, and you have Rudy Giuliani basically getting laughed out of court earlier this week when he had to admit that he wasn't actually alleging fraud. You know the president is just trying to throw things at the wall and see what sticks. And he's got to focus on maintaining democratic norms and start this transition.